Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to georeference this kind of a scanned topographic map using QGIS. And just a side note before we begin the tutorial, if you want to download these kinds of high resolution topographic maps for almost anywhere on earth for free, you can refer to the online topographic map repository of the University of Texas libraries. And I have done a complete step-by-step -step tutorial showing you the process. You can click the link that you're seeing on the top right corner of the screen to view that tutorial. And before we jump into the actual process of georeferencing, let's just spend a couple of minutes to examine the type of topographic map that we are working with over here. Now this map is a scanned JPEG image which I downloaded from the repository which I mentioned just now. We can see that it's quite detailed and has a high resolution. See even though I zoom into the map quite extensively, we are barely losing any quality over here. And everything is quite visible to me, including these topographic contours, as well as the other information uh, that's being represented on this map. Now, when we try to georeference a map like this, we need to check for two key things. First, we need to check if the map contains any coordinate information. And when I zoom into the corners, for example, when I zoom into this uh, lower left corner, we can start seeing some numbers over here. And that's generally a positive sign. And you can see that it comes with a grid as well. These blue lines represent the grid. So the grids are connected to a number over here at the border. And at every corner where the grid line meets the border, it indicates a particular number as you can see over here. Now since we can confirm that we are able to get some sort of coordinate information for this map, the next thing that we need to look out for is what sort of coordinate reference system is used in this particular map. And if I do a quick cursory reading of uh, the information that's stated over here at the bottom. Yeah, this is exactly what we are looking for. It says transverse Mercator projection and the blue numbered lines indicate the 10,000 meter universal transverse Mercator grid, zone 32, international spheroid. So that's pretty much all what we need regarding the coordinate system or the projection that has been used. And as you can see, these numbers are basically the UTM coordinates and there are increments of 10,000 meters. For example, over here you can see the number is 270,000 and over here it's 280,000, 290,000 and the unit is in meters and we have that for both easting and northing as well. That means at each intersection point of these blue color grid lines, we are able to get the particular coordinate and that's extremely helpful because you can see that there are quite a number of intersecting points but of course we are not going to use the coordinates of all the intersecting points. Minimum I would recommend to go with the four points but if we have the luxury for example over here we can pretty much get the coordinate of any point that we need across the entire map simply by checking out an intersection like this. So that can be considered as a luxury uh, when you're trying to georeference a map. All right, now let's go ahead and open up QJS, which is the JS tool that we are going to use for the georeferencing process. So this is my QJS interface and I'm using OpenStreetMaps as the base layer for this process, which is optional, but it's nice to have a base layer that can be considered to be geographically accurate. So I have already installed this uh, quick, quick map services and through which I can obtain this uh, OpenStreetMap standard which is a perfectly georeferenced uh, base map. And in case if you do not have this plugin, you can simply go to plugins over here, manage and install plugins. And from here you can search for quick map services. And as you can see, I have already installed that plugin. But in case if you haven't installed, you can simply just go ahead and install that plugin and you can access this uh, open street map just like what I have done over here. And the reason why we need to georeference a map like this is because this map right now is just a plain JPEG image, which is also a form of raster because this image is also made out of a huge collection of pixels. And at this state, if I were to drag this map and drop it over here, let's do it from here because uh, I have already navigated to my working folder and you can see that JPEG image over here. And if I were to drag it and drop it over here into my working space, you can see this question mark sign. And that indicates that that layer has no coordinate reference system yet. So what we are trying to do by georeferencing this map is to simply assign this image the relevant geographic information so that when we use this image in a GIS tool like QGIS or ArcGIS, the image will get placed perfectly in the correct geographic location. And that might require some alterations to the original version of this scan map like moving, rescaling, 
rotating and even adjustments of any potential distortions that it might have. And putting this map through that process is basically what we call as georeferencing this image. Alright, now I think you guys can remember that we found out that the projection that's been used in the topo map is UTM Zone 32 Projected Coordinate Reference System. So first I'm going to change the existing coordinate reference system of my working interface to that particular projected coordinate reference system. And for that I'm going to click right over here. And if you need to do a quick search, you can simply type UTM 32 North and we can quite simply navigate and pick the correct uh, coordinate reference system. In this case, we are talking about this WGS 1984 UTM Zone 32 North. So I'm going to select that and click Apply and click OK. And you can see that the view also got adjusted accordingly of our base map. So our area of interest should be somewhere over here. And the tool that I'm going to use to carry out the georeferencing process is basically called Georeferencer which is located under raster and you can see the name of the tool georeference over here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And now what I can do is I can simply load up the raster that we are going to work with by clicking on this button, open raster and the raster or the image that we are working with is basically this JPEG image. So I'm going to open that up. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to create some ground control points. And what do I mean by ground control points? Since we found out that the map is using a particular coordinate reference system and the coordinates are present, we can make use of that to specify where exactly each of these different intersections should be in UTM Zone 32 projected coordinate reference system. And we have to make sure that we space out those ground control points quite evenly across the entire map because that makes the georeferencing process much easier and accurate especially when it needs to correct for any potential distortions. So I'm going to first pick this point, this point where the where the two grid lines are crossing and I'm going to assign the corresponding coordinates according to what I can see over here. The number that I see over here, the x value is 270,000 and the y value is 5.1 million. And after that, when I click OK, you can see that the first ground control point got added over here. And I'm going to pick another point from somewhere in the middle of this map. And I'm going to use the same horizontal grid line, which is this particular line. So I'm going to go along that, find a point, find an intersection point like this. And I'm going to specify the corresponding X coordinate and as you guys can remember this is 270,000. Over here they put an indication saying that blue numbered lines indicate the 10,000 meter UTM grid. So in that case if this is 270,000 the X coordinate of this intersection point should be 350,000 in accordance with the number that we see over here and the Y coordinate will still be the same as what we entered previously which is uh, 5.1 million and just like that we managed to add the second ground control point as well and similarly I'm going to add one more point let's go with the, this intersection point right over here and the x coordinate is 420,000 and still the y coordinate is 5.1 million and you can see that we have three points right now. I'm going to add three more points, let's say somewhere from the top. And maybe I'm going to pick one or two points from the, from the middle region as well. So let's say we can go over here and pick uh, this point. And I might uh, fast forward the process from here because it's quite repetitive and you guys know exactly what I'm doing. And let's pick another point from somewhere over here.
All right, you guys can do a quick double check uh, if you wish to against the values that you can see over here in the table just to make sure that everything is in place. And now we can click over here on this transformation settings. And over here under transformation type, what we specify is basically in what sort of a complexity we would like to do our transformation of the scan map. Because it's common knowledge that when we acquire this kind of a scanned image or a scan map, the digital format of the map may not be always in proper orientation, isn't it? And there could be various kinds of distortions in the map. So by selecting the transformation type, we sort of allow the georeferencer to work with different transformation algorithms. And the complexity of these algorithms can actually vary depending on the type of the algorithm that you choose from here. Now, for example, if you were to go with the linear algorithm, which happens to be the most simple algorithm, which most likely might not be suitable, especially since you are working with a scanned map and there's always some distortion that gets introduced when we produce a scanned version of a map. And as the next option, you can see that we have the Helmut algorithm. We can use the Helmut transformation if you think that uh, just a simple scaling and transformation process is sufficient in order to alter your map to fit the reference points when we carry out the georeferencing. But uh, after that, what we see right over here is we have the polynomial algorithms, which is the type that's mostly being used uh, for the transformations when you are performing your georeferencing operations. Now, if you go with the polynomial one, you're basically allowing the algorithm to scale, translate and rotate your image in the process where it's trying to fit the scanned map into the corresponding uh, reference points. But if you go with the polynomial two, that'll basically allow some curvature as well which you also can see from the description that's appearing on the screen. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go with polynomial one and the resampling method, I'm going to take the default resampling method. And something quite important is the target coordinate reference system, which is a UTM zone 32. In case if this was not selected by default, you can always open the select coordinate reference system window by clicking on this button and you can search and select the corresponding coordinate reference system. And the output raster, you can specify it over here. By default, it'll take whatever the name that you gave for your original image and it'll put an underscore and say modified.tiff. And I'm basically okay with that. And we also can go ahead and uh, add a checkbox to this save GCP points. In here, GCP stands for the ground control points. And I guess that's pretty much it. Also, we can make sure that we activate this load in QGIS when done. That means once the geoprocessing is done, it'll get loaded up in QGIS. So after that, we can click OK. And now I can resize this window just a bit. And to execute the algorithm, all you have to do is click on this start georeferencing. And that'll start the georeferencing process. And now you can see that the map got added over here as a new layer, which is Geneva modified. And you can see that compared to this original image, there are some slight modifications uh, that has taken place. You can see that the map has rotated and being scaled properly in order to fit the corresponding actual locations. And we can always inspect that. I'm going to minimize this window. And now if I zoom in and try to see whether this map got placed exactly in the correct locations or not. Well, the first thing that I can simply do is deactivate this uh, Geneva modified layer. And from the first glance, you can see that it's, it's pretty accurate. It has done quite a nice job. So what we can do is we can zoom into one of the areas like this and we can go to properties of this Geneva modified layer and we can decrease the opacity just a little bit and click apply. Maybe I can decrease the opacity just a little bit more. And from here, also, if it's not too confusing for you guys, you can see that uh, the rail line is also getting placed correctly with the open straight map over here, just along the border of this uh, Lake Geneva. And uh, let me go ahead and turn this back to be 100. And if I deactivate the layer, you can see that it's pretty accurate. We can even do a quick uh, check by digitizing something from this topo map and we'll see whether it gets placed accurately on top of the, the open street map or not. So I'm going to create maybe a new layer called uh, a new shape file over here called lake and the geometry type is polygon. And I'm going to set the coordinate reference system to be the same. I'm going to get rid of the, the fill color and I'm going to have only the outline in, let's say, blue color. 
increase the thickness just a little bit all right and i can edit the layer and simply start digitizing on top of the topo map like this well since i'm doing this for the demonstration purposes i'm just going to run through it just a bit faster not really going to worry about the accuracy that much so just like that we can create one polygon and now if I turn off the Geneva modified topography layer you can see that it's getting placed almost exactly against the boundary of this uh, of this open street map layer which indicates to me that our georeferencing was actually quite successful but of course if you still think that you would like to make some improvements you can always go back to this georeferencer window and you can make changes and if you would like to remove some points uh, along the way you can simply right click over here and you can decide to remove them or you can simply go ahead and make edits right over here as well and after that you can rerun the the georeferencing algorithm and see how your results deviate from one another let me go ahead and save the edits of this polygon that i created and now if i get rid of all of these layers and if I were to close everything and if I drag this Geneva modified TIFF which is the newly created raster and now if I drag it and drop it over here you can see that I don't really have to worry about it getting placed somewhere else because now it's properly georeferenced which means that this particular file that you see over here is not just a TIFF file even though you would see the .tiff format it's a geotiff file which means it's a raster which contains the corresponding geographic information for each pixel that it's made out of so that you can without any hesitation drag it and drop it over here in a gis tool like this and it will get placed correctly at the exact location where it's supposed to be so that's about it for this tutorial guys if you do have any questions regarding the process don't forget to add a comment down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and as always, if you did like the tutorial, hit that like button. And if you do like to see more interesting tutorials like this on a weekly basis, don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. Because if you do, as soon as we publish a video, you will get notified immediately. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you again in another tutorial.